After having assessed the presence or not of cardiomegaly, specific chamber enlargement, it is also very important to have a look in more detail at the cardiopulmonary circulation. We therefore start very often with the major blood vessel, which is the aorta. The aorta in a normal thoracic lateral radiograph is not very visible in its ascending part. This is an exaggerating prominent aortic bulge which goes over into the thoracic aorta caudally in the chest cavity. On the dorsal ventral radiograph the aorta is visible in the 12 to 1 o'clock position and can be followed in many cases parallel to the spine into the abdominal aorta. A prominent aortic arch can be seen with multiple conditions, for example as a post-stenotic dilatation in severe aortic stenosis, as a part of multiple radiographic anomalies in patent ductus arteriosus with systemic arterial hypertension and many other conditions. A prominent pulmonary artery or a pulmonary artery bulge can often be visualized in the 1 and 2 o'clock position on the dorsal ventral radiograph and occasionally, but very often less visible, just under the bifurcation of the trachea on the lateral radiograph and can be a sign of pulmonary hypertension, can be seen as well as a post dilatation with severe pulmonic stenosis and some other conditions. A very important part of interpreting the cardiopulmonary circulation is to look at the pulmonary veins. It will tell us if there is pulmonary venous congestion and it might be the first indicator of the presence of congestive heart failure. The pulmonary veins are best visible cranial to the heart shadow on the lateral radiographs and every bronchus is accompanied by an artery dorsally and a vein ventrally. The vein should be nearly identical in width in the same intercostal space to the accompanying artery. In this radiograph, the pulmonary vein is mildly congested compared to the pulmonary artery. The caudal vena cava, who is positioned caudally of the cardiac shadow, should be smaller in diameter as the aorta in the same intercostal space. Dilation of the caudal vena cava indicates impaired venous return and might indicate congestive heart failure. We can see this in severe right-sided cardiomegaly and cardiomyopathy with severe tricuspid insufficiency but also with pericardial infusion. A normal caudal vena cava is always tilted towards the elbow of the dog. If there is right-sided enlargement, it will often be tilted towards the ear of the dog, which is another indicator that there is right-sided heart disease. Besides looking at the major arteries in the thoracic cavity, it's also important to have a look at the general pulmonary circulation. In this case, there is a lack of blood vessels, pulmonary vessels, in the pulmonary parenchyma, indicating hypoperfusion. To the opposite, if we have a very marked vascular pattern in the pulmonary parenchyma, it might indicate that there is pulmonary overperfusion. We can see this with right to left shunting, with iatrogenic volume overload, and occasionally as well with right-sided congestive heart failure, secondary to left-sided congestive heart failure.